All right, welcome back everyone to 80 Hours to Gingerman. We are on hour 78. Uh, so in the next few hours here, uh, I got a list of what I have to do. I'm hoping I can get uh, the motor, the transmission, get everything documented as far as how everything's connected, uh, get really good pictures just so I can plug it all in correctly. And then uh, that's coming out. Uh, so hopefully I can get all that, that stuff out and, and keep working through my list. My list, I have about uh, 53 hours remaining estimated of work. I have uh, 78 hours available. So we'll see if I can actually get it all done because you know what that uh, typically means scheduling wise, everything takes twice as long. But yeah, let's uh, dive in and get started. All right. So I'm about an hour in and got the front bumper removed, got the splitter removed, uh, radiator is out, got a bunch of the upper engine stuff labeled, uh, got a bunch of really good pictures. So also I drained the transmission fluid, the engine oil, and it honestly looks pretty good. So this is the transmission fluid. Let's see if I get some sunlight here. Um, not a whole lot, you know, a little bit of a, Little bit of specs, um, specs of metal, some brass, but I, I think that's pretty typical for a transmission. And then engine oil was in here, and I am really surprised by the engine oil. I expected it to look way worse, even though I had just put it in. I just expected a bunch of stuff to be in there, and uh, it wasn't too bad. So um, hopefully the oil system uh, isn't that bad, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get back to work here, try to get this engine out. All right, so we got the exhaust out here. Um, you see that gasket? And this is my concern, is this bend right here in this flex pipe. And you can see the bottom here. It's obviously was rubbing. Um, so the rest of it actually isn't too bad. So maybe we'll just, you know, work on this piece here. I mean, it's, it's pretty big. Maybe just replacing that flex pipe and then trying to figure out, maybe we put something underneath it so it doesn't scrape. Um, and for a plug, they just used a cut O2 sensor. I guess that works. They had a brace in the back, this bar here, there is the gasket, and then I got the PPF and the drive shaft. You can see on the power plant frame, yuck. Um, bunch of crud, drive shaft. Everything seems okay here. Um, no signs of damage or anything like that, so that's probably good to go. So I do have a, uh, a jack uh, supporting the transmission right now, so the engine doesn't tilt forward. So now I have to move to the motor mounts. Uh, motor mounts, probably disconnect the starter, see if there's any other wires underneath there that I have to disconnect, and then uh, I'll get the engine stand over here, and then hopefully I can... Uh, oh, don't want to forget the shifter. So... <laughs> Um, I am going to have to remove that as well. Um, I have forgotten that before. So when you drop the transmission, that just pulls that boot and then you got to buy a new one. It's like 40 bucks. Um, they break all the time, but I'll remember to unbolt that first. I think I'm ready to connect the engine hoist. Uh, seems like I got all the harness, at least on this side, disconnected. Let's see here, I got the harness. The oil lines are still attached, but there's plenty of play. I'll, uh, I'll get those once I get the engine up. Got the downpipe. I loosen the motor mounts, but I'm not going to try to take those out until I get some pressure off the engine. Hopefully I can pop those out by hand. Over on this side, there are, uh, few wires down here by the starter that I'm gonna have to take care of, but I'm hoping I can get to those when the engine gets up, but disconnected fuel, disconnected everything I could see. Coolant wise, I think I'm ready to go. But so far, a few things I'm, I'm not happy about the car. So mismatched hardware, a lot of mismatched hardware, which really sucks. So uh, I'm gonna be replacing that with matching hardware, you know, with common sizes. You just, the sway bar had a 10 millimeter 11 millimeter and then uh, two 12 millimeters that were held on by a 14 millimeter nut on each side. So <laughs> little things like that, uh, 
you know, hopefully I can get that fixed up. And boy, this thing is dirty. Uh, so when you get oil leaks like this, the oil kind of gets everywhere and wow, um, I'm really surprised at the level of dirt. Hopefully uh, I can get everything uh, cleaned up, but that's probably gonna be another hour or two and I gotta clean all my tools now. So we'll see, let's, uh, let's hook up the, uh, the hoist. So the motor's out of the car. Uh, I did the assessment, everything we needed on the car. Started the motor, found out the motor does in fact have rod knock. Got the motor out of the car, now we're gonna tear this thing down. What I wanna do is get this thing stripped so that it's gonna be ready for the next motor. I'm gonna get a junkyard motor. I'm not sure exactly what model this thing even comes from, so I gotta figure that out. Get a replacement motor, put all the stuff from this motor onto that one, make sure that's running good. I'm actually gonna swap out this transmission. The oil looked pretty good, but I just don't know the condition, so I'm gonna keep this as a spare. I actually have a brand new transmission from Mazda right here. Part of the contingency program, we ended up getting this for our, our 2020 season. Still haven't put that in the car yet, so this will be the perfect opportunity. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and dive in. Let's disconnect the transmission. I'll take a look at the clutch, the flywheel. Uh, I know all of that is specific to the Ecotech swap and we'll dive right in. All right, so got the transmission off. Uh, no major issues there, but I did find some interesting things. So the first thing, we have a four clutch disc. So four puck ceramic. I typically don't like using these and I don't like using them in endurance cars because I am afraid that it's gonna shock the drivetrain because these things are a little bit grabby. Uh, you can see an ACT logo on it. So this is from ACT, it appears. Put that along with the flywheel. The flywheel is also ACT. I don't know if you can see that logo. This is a steel flywheel. Now the pressure plate is purple which I'm pretty sure that the purple ones are flying Miata. Uh, ACT pressure plates usually come yellow. I have a couple, so I'm assuming that's flying Miata. And if you look closely, um, we do have some heat spots. So this thing definitely got hot from time to time. Now between that flywheel and then the OEM flex plate, there's uh, this adapter here. And it appears that this adapter is part of the Ecotech swap kit, I would imagine, because it adapts the flex plate to the Miata flywheel so it can work with the transmission. That makes sense. Nothing really unique about this, this looks fine. Now on the hardware, some of the bolts that were uh, with that adapter into the engine uh, actually had a lot of sealant on them. Um, I would expect to see Loctite, I saw a lot of sealant. So I'm gonna check the instructions and see if there's a reason why. I mean. Obviously the crank, it can have oil pass through those holes. So I'm sure they're there, but I've always used Loctite and that's been fine. So on the Miata flywheel into the adapter, tons of Loctite used. So that's good to see. Fred seemed fine on the, on the boss. It didn't rip any out, but I'll definitely clean these up before we reinstall them. Now the most interesting thing that I found was a crack, a pretty big crack on the flex plate. Now the flex plate is pretty light but God, I would imagine that you'd get some really weird vibrations from this thing, especially at higher RPM. I have no idea why it cracked, but it did. Uh, maybe it was part of a installation issue. So definitely I'm gonna have to get a new one of those for the new engine. Now, I don't think I'm gonna tear down the engine a whole lot more because I'm gonna wait until I get another engine just so I can compare it, know exactly where everything goes. And ideally I wanna take parts off of this engine and put them right on my new engine in the same spot. No need to take it uh, completely apart right now. So I gotta figure out some way to store this thing. 